What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, guys, we're going to talk about the law of reflection. And the law of reflection is going to talk about how light acts when it bounces off a barrier or another medium. So when light hits another medium, it either gets absorbed, it gets reflected, it gets refracted, which we haven't talked about, or a combination of all three of these. So today, just reflected. Now, the law of reflection is going to deal with diagrams. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the ray models and how we're going to draw light. We know light is a transverse wave, all right? So it, it travels in a sinusoidal wave like this. Now, to make things easier, we could take the crest and the trough and we can draw them as wave fronts. So we'll put a line every single place there is a crest or a trough. This is called wave fronts. And sometimes you'll see light drawn like this, and we can't think that this is a longitudinal wave. This is just the wave fronts of a sine curve. But the ray model even simplifies this even further, the ray model. And all it says is, let's draw a line with an arrowhead indicating which direction the light is traveling. So this way, the light wave is traveling this way, same as here. So instead of doing a sinusoidal wave or instead of doing these wave fronts, let's just do a straight line with an arrow giving the direction of that wave. And that's what we're gonna use in our diagrams, this ray model. And this is good because it's going to allow me to measure angles, which are gonna be super important. Okay, so right here, I'm just gonna say this is a smooth, flat surface. And I'm going to have a light ray which approaches this surface like this. I'm going to draw an arrow, guys. This is a vector. It always needs an arrow. The wave that is approaching a barrier. So this is really just a fancy word for barrier. This is called the incident ray. And this is a ray that's approaching a barrier. Now what happens is it hits the barrier and it reflects back off the barrier in this way. This is called the reflected ray. And this is a ray that's bounced off a barrier. And this mirror or this flat surface, whatever it is, light does not travel through, it just reflects it. Now, there is going to be something we're going to call the law of reflection. And it's just going to simply state that the incident angle is going to be equal to the reflected angle. Now, that seems simple enough, but we have to be very, very careful. In light, we always measure angles from the normal line. Okay, I'm going to draw the normal line in here, and I'm going to talk about some misconceptions that students always make. This is going to be the normal line. Guys, this normal line is imaginary. Okay, it doesn't exist. So nothing reflects or refracts off of the normal. When we talk about refraction later, kids always want to bounce light waves off the normal line. It is just an imaginary line we use for reference of measurement only. And just like any normal line, it is perpendicular to the surface. So that's super, super important that nothing bounces off the normal. The second very important thing is incident angles. And when I say incident, same as this. This is going to be the angle of the approaching ray. This has to be measured from the normal, not the surface. So guys, this is the angle of incidence. Guys, we never measure over here, ever, guys, ever, 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 under no circumstances can you measure angles from the surface. Now, this angle has to be equal to the reflected angle, which is also measured from the normal. And so it does not matter right now, if this was a plain old mirror, nice and flat, this is going to be true. And it gets confusing because students want to measure from the surface. I keep saying this. It happens over and over again. You cannot measure any angles in light, whether it's reflected or refracted in the next lesson from the surface. Always, always, always from this imaginary line perpendicular to the surface that we call the normal. Now, from an optic standpoint, we have to look at how images are created when they bounce off a mirror. So right here, I'm going to draw an upright mirror. So there's going to be some vocabulary in terms of how reflection and images are created. So right now, I have a person that's about to look in the mirror, and they have an H of H naught, and they are standing some distance from this mirror of D naught. When the light comes off of this person, it hits the mirror and it reflects. It is incident to the mirror and then it reflects. The same holds true here. It comes down, it bounces off the mirror, 
this way. And this is happening all over the person, but this is where the eyes are, so this is what they're able to see. For a mirror, if we trace the reflected lines backwards, this point right here is actually what we see. And we're gonna see later on that this is not the case for all types of mirrors. And this is not the t case for all types of reflections. So what we need to know for a plain mirror, there's going to be some characteristics that we need to look at. Number one, this is a virtual image. And what I mean by a virtual image and a good way to tell if an image is virtual or not is can you project this image on a screen? And the answer is no. Like if there was a screen back here, you would not reflect off the mirror and be projected on the screen. This is virtual. It's not really there. And that's kind of like how those 3D mirror rooms work, where it looks like there's a bunch of people standing everywhere. Or if you've ever seen like some other optical illusions that use mirrors where it looks like something's there, then you go to grab it and it's not. It's a virtual image. Okay, mirrors produce virtual images. They're not really, there's not really an object over here. And these reflected rays cannot be projected on a screen. Also, with a plain mirror, the H's are going to be equal. So we need to know that H naught is going to be equal to H for a plain mirror. So if you've ever looked in your rearview mirror, it says like objects in the mirror may appear closer than they actually are. That's because that is not a plain flat mirror. For a plain old flat mirror, and that's the one you look at your bedroom, right? You don't want to look in your bedroom mirror and be eight feet taller. And you could tell if your mirror is kind of cheap and warped because you're going to look all warped. But for a plain mirror, you're going to look exactly the same. Your height's going to be the same. And also it's going to appear that the distance that you're standing from the mirror is also the same. So we D naught is also equal to D. So when looking in a mirror, it produces a virtual image with the same height at the same distance. And there's one more obvious thing that you guys know about mirrors. The image is flipped. And I don't mean flipped like upside down, which we're gonna see in other optics, but when you look at the mirror, everything is spelt backwards. And here's a little fun fact. If you ever look at the front of an ambulance, the words on the front of an ambulance are spelt backwards. So then when you look at them through your rear view mirror, they appear to be the right way. If you think I'm just, you can probably never noticed that before in your life, go find an ambulance, look at it, not through a mirror, just from the front. And you'll see that the ambulance is actually spelt backwards on the front. So when you look at it through a rear view mirror, it's going to reverse the backwards image and make it appear to be correct. That's pretty much it, guys, on the law of reflection. Just remember, the law of incidence equals the law of reflection. The angle is always measured from the normal, not from the surface, and that images bounced off a plane mirror are virtual. They have the same height at the same distance, and they're reversed. Any questions, guys, let me know in the comments below. Have yourself a great day.